Doctor Who Marathon. I'm your host Vegeta and today we're going to be talking about The Last Day, written by Stephen Moffat and is directed by Jamie Stone. This is a short mini episode released on YouTube serving as a prequel to The Day of the Doctor, similar in way to The Night of the Doctor. Um, however, this story shows the fall of Arcadia, the, uh, the Time Lord's second city um, at the heart of Gallifrey, the home planet of the Time Lords, and essentially shows the, the precursor to the battle, the war that we see during um, those events where the War Doctor is. So essentially this is the, the last chronological appearance in the War Doctor era in a sense before we get introduced to any other Doctors in terms of our chronological timeline, or at least one that's official anyway. Um, maybe, maybe some people might be questioning why I'm even talking about this. It's very short, about eight minutes. It's not like it appears with any uh, big Doctor Who actors. There's nothing really much to talk about here. Um, uh, the only real connection it has is that it has a Time Lord soldier played by Chris um, Finch, who um, has a very, very small role in Day of the Doctor. For those of you who don't remember, he is the soldier who's calling up the High Council of Time Lords uh, before we see the War Doctor's shadow and asks for his gun. It's that Time Lord, him. The unnamed Time Lord soldier who has one scene in Day of the Doctor has his own little head story in this. It's very, very bizarre. It's also um, a POV story, probably the first one I think in our in any Doctor Who thing. A story um, from a person's perspective. We see it through the eyes of one of our of one of the characters, a nameless. Um, mute soldier, so basically the avatar for the audience, uh, which is a very interesting uh, idea. But um, with this being so so short, it comes off as a as a little gimmick in a way to keep it um, to keep it a little bit interesting of much. But apart from that, a lot of people. Uh, probably questioning why I'm talking about this. Another big uh, detail is, um, in terms of people who watches my videos, is why am I talking about it now? For you see, in the eighth Doctor War box, uh, Time War box sets, um, it is established in uh, one of those stories. I can't remember which one it is, um, but this story actually takes place during the 8th Doctor timeline, in which Arcadia falls. There's a story there which actually is um, um, set concurrent with this story. However, A, I've not listened to the 8th Doctor Time War box set, so I have no idea how those stories pan out. And B, personally, in my head, seeing as I'm someone who hasn't listened to those, I feel like this story works a lot better if it comes out right near, uh, right near when the War Doctor um, was fighting during Arcadia. Um, that's that's my opinion anyway. That you know because you know it serves as a prequel to that, and I'd like to imagine like like they say the last day of of the Time War. If you go by the idea that um, that the Eighth Doctor, uh, this story happened during the Eighth Doctor, then you have to then put in your head set in your canon that the War Doctor, in terms of Gallifrey, isn't even a day old. Put that in your head. How the hell does that work? Yeah, it's very awkward. If you put this story in the Eighth Doctor Adventures, maybe they did that because uh, that story may have been a plan for a War Doctor adventure. However, sadly, John Hurt passed away before um, that story could be released. 
that's my that's how I'm gonna trying to imagine it. But personally, this story in my head takes place just um, before uh, John Hurt's war doctor gets involved in the story. Now, a lot of people I've heard who talk about this absolutely hate it. They find it pointless. Um, the word filler comes to mind and really it's just an empty shell of a story. There's no characters, there's no emotional impact. It just feels like detail for the sakes of detail. Like we didn't, if this story didn't exist, we would have missed nothing. And true, I mean a lot of people haven't even heard this. When it was released on the BBC um, on the BBC YouTube channel, most people watching, eh, uh, okay, what was that all about? Um, will this introduce a concept which will be vital to Day of the Doctor? No. No. Not at all. So yeah, so like I said, there's not really much story here. There's absolutely nothing to talk about. The character, um, a mute character, has been basically trained up to be a soldier. And where we're seeing the story, he's just had this implant in his head so that um, basically his brain is now working as a hard drive, which means now that, um, say, for example, he dies, then his memories... Um, since having this implant can be transported and take and been sent as a video footage to his family. Um, very interesting concept. Um, something which actually has been dealt with, with Time Lords having some sort of conscience being uploaded, uploaded in a sense, with the Matrix and with the, um, I can't remember what they called it, in Legion of the Lost. Where it's like um, a technological technological version of a soul. Um, so I don't know if that connects with it or anything. Um, but anyway, we're seeing basically the video as if we're watching um, this this found footage of this of this first day of the fall of Arcadia. And it's here where we get introduced to this. Uh, Time Lord Soldier, this unnamed Time Lord Soldier, played by um, Chris Finn, and he's a he's a decent actor. Sadly, none of these um, none of this uh, gives off any uh, potential for any character development or anything. It's basically just him explaining how things work. Um, there's this weird detail about how um, putting this memory as a hard drive gives these. Um, soldiers um, visions um, to which some of the some of the other time lords have told um, our main character who's also unnamed in fact I just realized no characters get named in this um, they become uh, they see these visions and believe they're premonitions um, with the image is getting cut with the soldier screaming at our character's face. It's like, come on, we gotta fight! Um, we're all dying out here, kind of stuff. And it cuts into that with our scenes in the now, essentially. And uh, uh, I'm gonna just call him um, the Finch. Uh, the Finch is like, um, I know what the, ty what the others have told you, but believe me, they're not premonitions. They're just hallucinations. If you're making soldiers with um, visions, with um, things to distract them, you'll have a terrible army on your hands. Why would you do this? I mean, like, what? <laughs> so stupid, like... Like, a great example is actually in the story itself at the end. It's such a stupid, it makes no logical sense if you're going to have these soldiers have visions, hallucinations, or premonitions. 
which nobody believes anyway. Why? All you're doing is distracting your soldiers from fighting the time war. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. Why would you do this? Sorry, that was a bit of a rant than I um, anticipated. I've also just realised I didn't actually talk about the covers. Uh, the cover, uh, this is a cover I put together myself because there is no uh, cover. I really like the, um, the little triangle. I actually made this in PowerPoint, which is really funny. Um, I think it was PowerPoint. Yeah, I made, I made this bit in PowerPoint. And then I put in the rest of it together then on another thing. Um, there's a spine if anyone's interested. With John Hurt! I'm not in this one. In fact, don't even bother watching this one. Because I'm not in this one. Uh, I will see you soon though. There's one more circle. John Hurt left. And then, and then no more. No more. Sorry about that. And here's the back. Uh, yeah, and you've got the um, premonitions for there. Um, we then cut to a scene on an elevator where uh, Finch, he's like, um, uh, when you die, this will be sent to your families. If you swear, the video will cut. Um, which leads to like a nice little, uh, not that it made me laugh, it made me, hmm. Um, there's a bit where it's like, uh, if you swear, for example, if you say, then it'll cut. Uh, I think that was pretty, uh, I think that was a very uh, fun little detail there. And anything gruesome, like your de actual death, for example, would be um, tinted red. So, um, so like if your kids see in this, which is just realise is a very disturbing Thing, isn't it? You can have your family watch your death and watch your like your last moments. It's very messed up. I mean, the time lords have no privacy. I mean, I guess this does tie into the whole idea that the time lords were becoming a darker soldier race, um, similar to the Daleks in a sense, and to which nobody can tell the difference between the two races in certain cases, like Cass during Night of the Doctor, or even the Doctor himself in the Enigma dimension. And uh, then we get beat up on um, this, like, balcony, where they meet, like, this general character, like the leader of this soldiers, uh, Himba there, who explains that uh, this is the safest, this is Arcadia, the safest place on Gallifrey. The reasoning is because it's infamous sky trenches, Nothing has ever passed a sky trench, and we have thousands of them up there. Um, so basically, don't worry, just relax, chillax, you know. Um, there's no need to worry, we'll set everything, and, and just keep an eye out, but mostly you'll be fine. Um, uh, again, it's just detail, there's nothing really strong there. And... Then our character, uh, the character who's we're seeing the point of view of, looks through these camera things as Finn is, Finch is telling him how these cameras work. And through the, the, the camera we see a lone Dalek flying uh, from the clouds onto Arcadia. And Finch is like, that's not, a, that's not an hallucination. Send the alarm. Do it now. Do it! And then he comes out and we see everybody panicking as people running around. But when he looks back in the visor, uh, we see a bunch of Daleks then fall out of the sky as the fall of Arcadia. The Arcadian invasion begins as a Dalek uh, flows right into the camera and shoots straight into the lens, killing our main character, killing us. In a way, or our POV character, anyway, our nameless POV character. And despite it being very short, that's the last day. Um, overall, it was a very weak short. Um, uh, short. Uh, it didn't use its time to say anything, to do anything, to play on its role as a character. But 
I don't say there's nothing to get out of it. The idea of of um, of a found footage on Gallifrey is a very interesting um, concept to see it. The time war with no doctor in it, or at least an aspect of it. Uh, something that really I can gravitate towards too, because uh, it means that the, the doctor's mysteries, this grandiose adventures he's having, is. Um, elsewhere, even though we've got it now in the War Doctor box sets. Um, and it's just, there's just nothing really to it. And um, what I was saying earlier about the premonitions, about how that's just like gone against its own concept, right at the end, like the, our main character um, halted, he hesitated. Um, Presumably because he thought it was an hallucination. You've effectively made your uh, army redundant because every time they'll see something, they'll have to question, is it real or is it not? It's just so... so stupid. And... Um, but I'm glad it exists. I honestly am glad it exists. I always like these small little details... Uh, the small little stories. I just wish it was better. I wish there was at least something to gravitate towards too. And I just wish that there was something this story could offer us on some sort of emotional, philosopher, philosophic, if that's even a word, or just any sort of level, even if it's a popcorn enjoyment. But as it stands, it's something which I watched, and then I'll probably forget about it. It's a very bizarre uh, short. And I, don't, I honestly don't understand how it even got made. The production of it... I mean, I don't think any of the sets were reused from Day of the Doctor. These are all original sets. It's very, very bizarre. Like, they put money into this. They got Jane, Jamie Stone's... To direct it. I mean, sure, he only directed a, another previous short after this. But he's done some pretty good television work. And would go on to direct a few episodes in the Chibnall era. But it's just so bizarre. And for Stephen Moffat, it has none of Stephen Moffat's twerks. But it doesn't have anything which Stephen Moffat enjoys either. It's really, really bizarre. But, uh, but there you go. That's... The last day, or all just... Yeah. So join me next time, where we will be talking about a story which I can't show you, thanks to YouTube's copyright system. Um, as I talk about something which... A story which is really personal to me, personally. I'll explain later on in the next video. So join me next time for... No more! And I'll see you next time on The Doctor Who Marathon. Ta-ra!